Okay, guys, the principle I use in the Learning Through Comparison series comes from uh, two areas. One is the historical knowledge of, of how to use these tools in the Philippines. Uh, but the other comes from my law enforcement training when I was a farm instructor for a while. And there was a, a principle among law enforcement trainers or a phrase, let's say, a warning called the dead man's ken. And the idea was you can hit somebody in a mortal wound in the heart or shoot his carotid or do something that doesn't take out the central nervous system and it's going to bleed out quickly, but he still may have like 10 seconds to stab you or shoot you. So he's got 10 seconds left to fight in him, even though, you know, his heart is blown up. And when I say blown up, I mean, we've seen people blown up. Heart get, got hit by a shotgun. The coroner's report said the heart was shredded and the guy ran 40 yards. So how many times can a guy stab you in the time it takes to run 40 yards? So anyway, um, to relate this to hunting practice is a principle in big game hunting in Africa, especially with large, hard to take down dangerous game like Cape Buffalo, where if you hit the first shot in the heart and he charges you, don't put another shot in the heart. It ain't gonna help you. What they will do is shoot the shoulder, lead shoulder, and break the buffalo down that way, get him in the ground, and then it's a lot harder for him to get back up and you have time to take a, a shot to the head, whatever it will, you know, put him down permanently and instantly. So I use that same principle here, you know, a Bowie knife. Uh, it's the lightest of the three learning through comparison tools we are looking at, uh, but it still obviously cuts much better than a pocket knife. So when you see these diagonal cuts here, I'm not cutting his throat. I'm actually trying to break his collarbone because that will impede the arm from moving. When you see a stab, I might not stab the heart, I might stab into the shoulder joint to stop the shoulder from moving. So a lot of times when we're teaching uh, firearms work to law enforcement, in New York State at least, we don't say shoot to kill, we say shoot to stop. And that's literally what we're trying to do. We're trying to stop the action right now. So um, that close quarters work with a big Bowie knife, you actually have a little more chance for picking your targets than you do you know, firearms training at seven yards, right? So I'm trying to break that collarbone. I might be trying to stab that deltoid if I have something heavier like a pound and a half kukri. You'll definitely break those collarbones even on heavy winter clothing. I won't stab to the deltoid because this is really a cut-centric weapon where the blue knife is a thrust-centric weapon. What I'll do is I'll cut the bicep and tricep. That's just as effective as making that arm drop and he drops the weapon out of his hand. When we go to a hatchet or a tomahawk, yeah, that bites deep, gets right into the, definitely will break the bones. But if you have multiple opponents, do you want to bury this thing into his chest and then you try to pull it out and it's very hard to get out. You know, simulate it a little bit if they're going to clothing, you know, I'm pulling out this way, right? Um, and even that said, you cut and you rake down, unless you got a razor sharp inner uh, beard here, you're probably not going to cut through his clothing. It's probably going to get stuck, especially if you're carrying this like most people would as a woods tool, as a camping tool, not as, you know, a last ditch grab on your uh, flak jacket or, uh, pardon me, ballistic vest, uh, uh, entry team and a SWAT team. Unless you're an entry team doing SWAT, you're probably carrying this as a camping tool, not a dedicated weapon, let's say. So when you go for the collarbones, I want actually want to hit those with the top half of the ax so I don't get stuck, it just slices through. If I go hitting directly in, then it's very likely they get stuck. And I mentioned this in one of my other videos where fireman's ax will have a diagonal line of paint on it in the old days. And the idea if you're hitting a piece of plywood like building material, you're trying to cut through that. If the farming goes smashes it in like you would if you're chopping down a tree, then you're gonna get stuck. So same idea here. So the whole point of this talk is you wanna look at these tools with their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, you know how to make a diagonal strike or diagonal cut with your uh, collie stick but don't automatically think you're gonna take that and do the same thing with a Bowie knife, same thing with a Kukri, same thing with a hatchet. You have to take, make allowances for how these things are used.